the enchanted Brahman's son. There lived a Brahman called Devasarman, in the city of Rajshagriha. His wife was childless, and she wept bitterly whenever she saw the children of her neighbors. One day the Brahman told her, Dear one, stop mourning. I remember a time when I was offering a sacrifice to God for the birth of my son when I was told by an invisible being, in the clearest words, Brahman, you will receive this son, and he will surpass all men in beauty and virtue, and he will receive good fortune in return. As soon as the wife of the Brahman heard this, she was enthused and said, such promises must come true. She became pregnant and gave birth to a snake in the following months. She was surrounded by her attendants, who yelled, throw it away. However, instead of paying attention to them, she picked it up, had it bathed, and, filled with the love of a mother toward her son, laid it into a large, clean container, fed it milk, butter, and the like, so that it reached its full size within a few days of being able to grow. When a Brahmin's wife attended the wedding feast of a neighbor's son, her eyes filled with tears, and she told her husband, you treat me with contempt by not making any effort to arrange a wedding for my child. When he heard this, the Brahmin said, honored one. To achieve that I would have to go to the depths of hell and beseech Pasuki, the king of snakes, for who else, you fool, would give his daughter in marriage to a snake? Having said this, he looked at his wife with her exceedingly sad face, and, for the sake of her love and in order to pacify her, he took some travel provisions and departed for a foreign land. After traveling about for several months he came to a place by the name of Kukatanagara. There, as evening fell, he was received by an acquaintance, a member of his caste. He was given a bath, food, and every necessity, and he spent the night there. The next morning he took leave and was preparing to set forth once again, when his host said, What brought you to this place, and where are you going now? The Brahman answered, I have come to seek an appropriate bride for my son. After hearing this, the host said, If that is the case, then I have a very appropriate daughter. I have only respect for you. Take her for your son. Acting upon these words, the Brahman took the girl, together with her servants, and returned to his home city. However, when the inhabitants of this region saw the girl, who was beautiful, gifted, and charming beyond comparison, they opened their eyes wide with love for her, and said to her attendants, how could you deliver such a jewel of a girl to a snake? After hearing this, all of her companions were horrified, and they said, she must be rescued from the murderer set up by this old Brahman. Hearing this, the maiden said, Spare me from such deception, for behold, kings speak but once. The virtuous speak but once. A girl is promised in marriage but once. These three things happen but once. And further, not even wise men and gods can change the decrees of fate. And moreover, my father shall not be reproached for his daughter's falseness. Having said that, and with the permission of her attendants, she married the snake. She showed him proper respect and served him milk and similar things. One night the snake left his large basket, which was kept in the bedroom, and climbed into his wife's bed. She cried out, Who is this creature, shaped like a man? Thinking it was a strange man, she jumped up. Shaking over, she tore open the door and wanted to rush away, when the snake said, Dear one, stay here, I am your husband. To convince her of this, he once again entered the body that he had left in the basket, then left it again. He was wearing a magnificent diadem, rings, bands, and bracelets on his upper and lower arms. His wife fell at his feet. Then together they partook of the joys of love. His father, the Brahman, had arisen earlier than his son and saw everything. He took the snake skin lying in the basket and burned it in the fire, saying, he shall not enter it again. Later that morning, filled with joy, he presented his son to his family. Vitalized by unending love, he became an ideal son.